Hello and happy Wednesday. This is Mary Michelle with One Chic Mama, and I want to welcome you to another edition of One Chic Mama TV. I've got some great information for you this afternoon, and I'm really excited to share with you some things that I haven't been talking about much before. Well, actually, I have a little bit, but in a whole different way. Today, we're going to talk about color and how you can use it to your best advantage. But first, I want to share with you a quote. This quote is actually from Gore Vidal. Not sure I'm saying his name right, but I love what he has to say. He says, style is knowing who you are, what you want to say, and not giving a damn. So know who you are, know what message you want to send, and don't care what anybody else has to think about it. Because what's important is that you care and that you feel proud of how you project yourself. Now, before... I start talking about my topic today. Oh, I'll tell you, my topic today is called Your Fabulous Five. I've actually started talking to my clients about color in a whole new way. And I realized last week when I worked with some groups in my Discovery 101 sessions and people had huge, huge breakthroughs and huge ahas. And they looked at me and said, hey, you've given me a plan. Now, I've always talked about creating a plan and creating a wardrobe strategy. But a lot of women can easily get overwhelmed. So I wanted to break it down into a way that you can really understand. Now, one thing that I've found is that a lot of women get overwhelmed with shopping. And they walk into a store and they completely freak out. And what do they do? They buy another pair of black pants. I know. I see it happen. I clear them out of closets all the time. I can't really say I've done that myself because I'm not a huge fan of black pants. But I get it, and I see how easy that can happen. But what I also get is that when women understand what other colors to wear besides black and how to put those into play, that they can transform their wardrobe and their image. Color is actually the first thing that people notice about you. When you meet somebody, what you, what you notice is the color that they have on. Now, I actually wore black today on purpose. I wore it because I wanted to wear black. And I talk a lot about wearing black and how it's not the best color for everybody. Now, I will say it is one of my best colors because of my personal color harmony. And we'll talk more about that in a few minutes. But what I tell my clients is that whether it is or isn't one of your best colors, it doesn't mean you can't wear it. But what it means is that I want to encourage you to wear it on purpose. Wear it with intention and not by default. And what I mean by that is that I want you to wear it because you choose to and you love it. You feel great in it, not because you don't know what else to wear. There is a huge, huge difference. Before I get into my topic, I'd like to ask if we could see the first slide because I have a fabulous giveaway this week. We have a great giveaway. I love, love, love these arrangements. These are actually paper flowers created by Three Pearls Papery. They're actually locally made here in Raleigh, and I have this beautiful arrangement that I want to give to one lucky listener. And to enter, all you need to do is go to my Facebook page. And that's, if you get on Facebook, go to facebook.com slash one chic mama. Like the page. Give me a comment. Tell me what you think. And then I'm going to put you in the drawing. You can send me a private message if you want. Honestly, I want to hear your feedback. I want to hear what you have to say. Do you like the show? What do you want to hear more of? I do plan to have more guests. I've got a great guest next week. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about later. But right now, I want to tell you how to wear color with confidence and how to pick your fabulous five. Now, when I talk about your Fabulous Five, I'm not talking about your favorite rock band. I'm talking about your best five colors. Now, why five colors? Honestly, when we talk about color, and my clients get their personal color palettes, they get their 40 best colors. But you know what? That is overwhelming. So what I do is I break it down. I break it down in a way that they can easily understand and that gives them a focal point. Now, when I talk about the Fabulous Five, 
In fact, when I worked with a client yesterday, I told her, it, this doesn't mean I only want you to wear five colors. That's not what I'm talking about. But what I am talking about <clears throat> is that when you break it down and focus, because if, if your options are all over the map, they're out here, where do you start? How do you even know where to begin? But when you can narrow your focus and say, okay, I'm going to start with these few five colors and begin to build my wardrobe. I work with a lot of women who are just starting from scratch. And when I say starting from scratch, that means they're ready to ditch everything in their closet. Doesn't mean you have to do that to start with this or to use this. But they're ready to ditch everything in their closet and go in an entirely different direction. So what this formula does is it gives you a place to start. Now, knowing your Fabulous Five not only gives you a place to start, but it helps you. It helps you to build and to create a wardrobe that I like to say multitasks. It's versatile. It gives you options that are going to help you always know what to wear. And that's great. It also gives you more bang for your buck. Because clothes are not inexpensive. And what I mean by that is that we spend way too much money. Maybe not too much money. But we spend a lot of money on our clothes. And when those clothes don't last, it's money down the drain. So I want to encourage you to spend your money wisely. We're going to talk about where to put your money, where to go to invest, and where to go cheap. So it's not a good idea to buy everything on the cheap, unless you get great deals for great quality. But for many years, I've been co coaching my clients to use a few of their best neutrals and a few of their accent colors, or what I like to call their wow colors, to build their wardrobe around. But I found that by breaking this down to five colors, you really can start small and add from there. And what that creates is a wardrobe filled with pieces that are multitasking, that are versatile, that coordinate. It's easy to get dressed. Now, I've done this in my own wardrobe. And I have to say, I don't really follow anybody's rules except my own. And even those, I have a tendency to break. But I know how to put things together in a way that works. And I'm always thinking about how can I create something new and different from what's already in my closet. So I like to have fun with it. I like to experiment. But I realize that not everybody is as visual as I am. So I try to make it easy and really give, it, give you a formula so that when you go out and go shopping for your spring items, you know where to start. You know what to add. You know what's going to go with what. So when you want to talk about your Fabulous Five, can we see the first slide real quick? I talk about, no, the next one, the next one. Your Fabulous Five are made up of two neutrals and three of your best wow colors. So take note of that because that is going to make a difference. Now, again, I'm not encouraging you to limit yourself, but this is your starting point because when you have your two neutrals and your two best wow colors, or I'm sorry, your three best wow colors, you have a formula. And with that formula, you can liberate yourself. And you can liberate your wardrobe. It's not meant to limit you, but it will liberate you. Yes, it will set you free from black. So, first of all, let's talk about, number one, your, wow, your two wow colors. Your two wow colors begin... Black could be one of them, but they really begin with looking at your personal coloring. Now, I like to talk to my clients about finding your quote-unquote new black. What's your new black? Doesn't mean even if black is one of your best colors that you can't wear it. But I, what I want to encourage you to do is to find a new black. Find another neutral. Maybe it's your hair color, whether it's one of the darker shades, or maybe it's a variation of your hair color. But that's where I want you to look. Because what happens, and this is so, so cool, what happens when you wear your hair color or a version of it is that it personalizes your look. 
it's not you just wearing a color, but it's you repeating your personal coloring. And when you can do that, it makes you look better. It brings light to your face. It enhances your hair. It makes you look amazing. Now, I had an experience last week, and I was so proud of my client. One of my clients came by my office, and she was wearing a jacket in what I refer to as her hair enhancer. Now, she has white hair, beautiful woman in her 60s, beautiful white hair. Her jacket was a pearlized version of that, and it was phenomenal. In fact, I kept complimenting her, and she just, she wasn't, she'd never really gotten that much praise before, so I think she was a little surprised, but it made her day, and it made my day to see that. It was so cool. And that's a great example. However, one thing I will say is when you're finding your new black, I want you to opt for a darker shade as opposed to a lighter shade, because to use white or really light khaki, it's not necessarily going to work, and I'll tell you why. One reason women love black is that it's slimming. Darker colors are way more slimming than lighter colors are. So I want you to pick a color that's a little bit darker, if that's an issue for you. If you want to put on weight or appear heavier, go for a lighter color. There's no judgment around it. I want you to find what works for you. And if you're heavier, it doesn't mean you can't ever wear a light color. But when I talk about your best core neutral, I want it to be a darker shade because it's going to be a little bit more versatile. And typically, you want to wear your dark colors on bottom. So choose a color that's close to your hair color. It's in a dark brown. or Well, mine would be in a dark brown. Yours may be completely different. If you have blonde hair, I'd say go for a dark caramel. If you have silver hair or white hair, I'd say go for a medium to charcoal gray. So think about what's going to work for you. And if your hair is really light, think about it as like paint swatches on a scale of light to dark. And go for a darker version of your coloring because that's going to personalize your look. Now when you have your new black, I want you to take note of that. Make a chart for yourself. Write it down. Make a list. Because what happens when you do that is you have direction. You go out and you go shopping and you don't freak out. You know you have a plan. So this is the start of your plan. So you have your first core neutral, which is your hair enhancer. Now your second core neutral, I want that to be another one of your most Neutral and least memorable colors. Now, what I, again, what I mean by that is a color that's going to go with a lot of different things. Black is very versatile. In fact, most people could put it with just about any top in their closet. Is it going to be the most flattering to them? Probably not. However, when you substitute one of your best neutrals, it's going to be great. So think about your personal coloring. And a co- you, here's the second key. You also want your second neutral to coordinate with the first, meaning they're interchangeable. They work well together, and they're going to work well with the same colors. So when you bring in your wow colors, they're going to go with neutral one and neutral two. Amnon, can we see the slide? The same one? The picture, the colors. Now I want to show you what I'm talking about. When you create a strategy... For this example, now these are not necessarily my best colors at all. The two browns are perfect for me. That orange, I would never wear. But this is just an example. So when you create a strategy, we're talking about the two core colors at at the top. And you see I've got a good medium brown that actually reflects my hair color. And then I chose a lighter brown, and that's actually close to my eye color. So I know for me, it's a great combination. Those two are a great combination. So think about two that are going to work well. Come back here. Um, think about two that are going to work well for you, that are going to coordinate with each other as well as together with some accent colors. Now, two, let's talk about accent colors for a minute. Let's see that slide one more time. Accent colors are what I like to call wow colors. And what I refer to as wow colors, 
I, the reason I refer to them as wow colors is because they are your best accent colors. They're not just brights, but they are your best brights. Now, I will tell you, that chartreuse in the picture, I would never, ever wear. That would look hideous on me because my skin tone is cool. And it would make me look washed out. So this is not my color palette by any means. And the orange, that's not my color. The coral, that's not my color either. But this is created hypothetically. And these, you see the three wow colors. I have a chartreuse. I have a turquoise. And I have sort of a coral color. They all, in my humble opinion, they all look great together. And they all coordinate with the neutrals. So what you can do in looking at this, you take the brown, you could wear the dark brown, you can wear that with the chartreuse, you can wear that with the turquoise, and you can wear that with the salmon. Now we're going to talk about how to do that in a, in a few minutes. But if you look at the lighter brown, you can mix that with the chartreuse, that with the turquoise, and that with the salmon. And it's going to look great. So think about three wow colors that are going to work for you. It doesn't really, well, I was going to say it doesn't really matter what they are, but it, it does matter to a certain extent. One guide I want you to think about is your eye color. Now, in that chart, I actually use my eye enhancer or my eye color as a neutral. Think about what color your eyes are. And if your eyes are blue or green, I want, you to, I want to encourage you to use one of those shades as a wow color. Why? Because when you wear it, it makes your eyes pop. Now another color you can think about is a color that I call your hair intensifier or your eye intensifier. And when you wear your intensifiers, what that means is that you're wearing, if you look at the Munsell color wheel, I did not bring a picture of that today, unfortunately, but you can Google that. So Google the Munsell color wheel and find your eye color or your hair color and look at what is opposite of that because that is going to be your intensifier. And what I mean by intensifier, it's going to make your hair stand out. It's going to make your eyes stand out. That's going to be a wow color for you, especially if you speak, if you're in the media, if you're in print, it's going to make you look fabulous. So think about that. One of those colors is a wow color. You could, you could use your hair intensifier, your eye intensifier, and your eye color if it's blue and green. But I want you to choose the colors that you like to wear the best, the colors that make you feel fabulous, the color that you always get complimented on. It may be surprising to you to think about it. Maybe you've never thought about it before. But choose three colors, and I want you to choose three colors that work together. Because the goal with these five colors is maximum versatility. And when you have three neutrals, or two, I'm sorry, two neutrals and three wow colors, the combinations that you can create is exponential. So I want you to think about how to put these together in your wardrobe. Let's talk about ways to bring those in. I'm going to back up and talk about core colors again for a minute. What pieces do you wear in your core colors? Well, to start with, pants. That's usually the first color I think about in pants. And when you think about wearing your hair color, and you think about, I like to talk about bookending. Of course, I always have to do this. But bookending, wearing your hair color, and when you wear pants in your hair color and wear shoes in a similar color, it bookends. That creates harmony, and that creates balance. And I want you to think about this. I have had so many clients who have light-colored hair and light-colored skin wearing black, wearing black pants, wearing black shoes, and it's visually heavy. It's visually unbalanced. And so when they can change the black and wear maybe it's a medium brown or a light brown or a caramel, and they change it out, the effect is truly amazing. And the difference, the contrast, it's night and day. You go from wearing something that's harsh and visually heavy and dominates your look. In fact, I talk a lot about black overpowering you. 
Because if you put it with the wrong color, it totally overpowers you. And that's all people see. They don't see you or your beauty shining through. They just see the black. So when you wear black, I want you, again, wear it with intention. Wear it because you know how to wear it. Wear it like you mean it. But if you choose to wear another neutral, wear your best neutrals. Wear your best colors. So pants. Pants, shoes, a jacket. Actually, if you wear a jacket in your hair enhancer, it's gorgeous. And as I mentioned a few minutes ago, when you wear a pearlized or metallic version of your hair enhancer, it takes it to a whole new level. That's a great secret because you know what that does is it brings light to the face. It makes you look amazing. And who doesn't want that? So it's easy tricks like that. And when you can do that and look amazing, why would you ever? Wear black that's going to wash you out. Now, one thing I will say about what I have on today, I have on black, but I put a necklace around my face that reflects light. So that brings light to my face and can counteract the, the draining effects of black. It also helps to wear some color in your cheeks and your lips to give you some life. It makes a difference. So think about how you're wearing black and what things you can do to take it to a new level. So core items, pants, a jacket, shoes, handbag, anything that you wear over and over again is going to be a core item. It could be a skirt. It could be a top. It could be a trench coat. Actually, your winter coat or your spring trench coat, a core color is a great color for that. And again, they're least memorable, most neutral, meaning if you wear it five days in a row, nobody's going to say, hey, you just wore that. Because it's like a chameleon. It takes on the personality of what you put it with. So think about what will coordinate with it to make you look phenomenal. Now, when you bring in your wow colors, well, how do you wear those? Well, honestly, I shopped with a client the other day. She got some great, great things, and we totally put this into play. And I want to tell you, she bought a hot pink suit. Yes, she got a hot pink skirt. She got a hot pink jacket. They looked fabulous. Now, that is not necessarily something I would recommend if you're starting to build a wardrobe. However, she got some other great pieces that are totally neutral. This worked in, and it gave it enough pop to really make her stand out. And it mixed and it matched, and it totally coordinated with so many other things that she bought, how could she not buy it? And it worked. It looked fabulous for her. It was a great color. It was a great cut for her body type. She felt fabulous. So it was a wonderful purchase, a wonderful investment, actually, for her. But she also got a brown suit. She got cream pants. She bought a beautiful Jessica Simpson trench coat that was navy blue with cream polka dots. And you know what we did is we took Pictures of all these pieces intermixed using these principles. And she was amazed at how many outfits we created. Now, I took pictures of at least 12 outfits, but I know that she could create, I'm going to say, at least 20, at least. Now, that's almost three weeks worth of wardrobe. And we did that actually in just two hours. That was some serious power shopping. But we did great, we did a great job. She, know, she now has clothing that's going to carry her through spring and even into summer. And it's things that she can build on continually. So that's the key. Now, make, being able to mix and match, I cannot stress that enough. Mixing and matching is key. Because when you bring in your wow colors, they need to work together as well as with the neutrals. So, for example, a few things that my client bought the other day... She bought a navy and cream striped shirt. She mixed that with a navy and ivory polka dot trench coat. That looks great. Actually, it's not for everybody, but because her style was a little bit whimsical, it totally worked. And she loved it. It was unexpected. But those two were, were both, neither of those were core items. Certainly, we put them with the neutral pant. Actually, we put them with the hot pink skirt, the cream pant, and the brown pant. And it looked great. So it's just a matter of understanding how to mix those. 
But typically your accent colors are going to be tops, jackets, scarves, jewelry, things you wear around your face. Because wearing color around your face is where you get the maximum benefit. Now, one thing that's hot right now is wearing colored pants and colored jeans. And honestly, I love this trend. In fact, I have jeans in a lot more colors than I ever thought I would. And I love wearing them, and I love mixing them with brights. But what happens when you mix the bright colors with brights or or flip it around and you wear your colored pants on bottom and black on top? Hmm, that's a whole different effect. And I want you to think about that. And think about how it works for you. And ask yourself, is that right for my body type? Or is it right for my coloring? If you have fair skin and fair colored hair and you wear bright colored jeans and a black top, it's going to wash you out. And you've got your color where it's not giving you the maximum benefit. Flip it around, wear your dark colors on bottom, wear your color up top. Or you could... You could... Add a scarf. Add a scarf in one of your best colors. And that's going to bring color and light around your face. Now, can we see the slide with the colors again, please? One thing I want you to think about bringing in are prints. Now, the prints that I chose here, I've got two that are sort of brown and orange. And then I have two that are predominantly blue and green. Now, I'm not advocating that you necessarily wear these prints together. However, I just wanted to show you some examples of going to the next level. The solids will give you a good foundation, and I definitely encourage you to start there. But taking it to the next level, if you like prints, if you like pattern, Bring in some prints and patterns in tops, in a jacket. Actually, I've seen some beautiful pattern jackets this season. In a scarf, in a handbag, or even in shoes. And see how fun it can be. Now, one thing I'm going to address as well is printed pants. We're seeing a lot of printed pants this season. And they're not for everybody. In fact, I'm going to encourage you If you're heavier on bottom, say you're lower body dominant, or even if you're an hourglass shape, you may want to be very careful. Actually, I would strongly encourage you to be very careful about wearing printed pants. I'm not going to say I'll never wear them. In fact, I do own a pair of leopard print jeans. I never thought I would. But I, I don't wear them very often. But I found the right style for me. I found some that I felt great in. That's the key. That's the key with all this. Wear colors that make you feel fabulous. That's why they're called your Fabulous Five. But if you want to wear printed pants, be extra special careful. Because what they can do is they can make you look bigger. So wear them sparingly and make sure that you wear prints that are in your personal scale. What I mean by that, and that's something I talk with my clients about, is wearing prints and wearing patterns that repeat your personal scale. They're not overwhelming, and they're not too small. Because what happens when you wear something that's too small is it makes you look bigger, not in a good way. But when you wear something that's too big, it makes you look smaller and not in a good way. It looks out of proportion. Something's off, maybe you're not sure what it is. But ask yourself, is the print, is the pattern right for me? Now, the fifth thing I want to talk to you about is wearing accessories. Or actually, as I like to refer to them, as add-ons. Because add-ons are not always accessories. And it's the add-ons that can actually make or break an outfit. In fact, one of the biggest questions I get asked is how do you look polished? How do you look pulled together? Here's the key, add-ons. Anybody could get up and put on a t-shirt and pair of pants in neutrals. And, or in their accent colors or their wow colors. But unless you finish it off, it's going to look simple, boring, frumpy, unfinished. 
I know if I ever walk out of the house <clears throat> without accessories, I feel unfinished. I feel like something's missing. Now, sometimes on the weekend, I choose not to wear any accessories or makeup, believe it or not. But it's just everybody needs a break. And sometimes I'm just not in the mood. But you know what? If I'm dressing up to go somewhere, to see somebody, to go on a date, to go to a meeting, to go to work, I always wear accessories. I love accessories. And I feel like they're the icing on the cake. They're where I get to have fun with my wardrobe. And that's where I want to encourage you to play with your wow colors, to play with your look, to bring in your personal style. Now, we've talked so much about color tonight, but I will say accessory. Accessories are such a wonderful place to bring in color. So many clients tell me, oh, I'm afraid of color. I'm not sure how to wear it. And I really try to break it down. But if you're not sure, if you're not used to wearing color, I want to tell you this. Accessories are a wonderful place to start. Why? Because, number one, you can get inexpensive accessories for nothing. You can try out color. You can try out print. You can try out texture. Ten bucks or less. And if, certainly you can invest a lot in accessories. But if you just want to dip your toe into the water and test it out, try a scarf. You can get a great scarf at Forever 21 or a lot of different stores for probably 10 bucks or less. Actually, one of my office mates had a beautiful scarf on the other day. She had on a black top and gray pants. And she came in. She's actually a new client of mine. So she's been putting into practice some of the things that I've taught her. But she came in and she had on this beautiful scarf that circled around her face that brought in some red. It had some ivory in there, a little bit of gray, and some red. So she added a wow color. She also added another neutral, which was the white. But that little bit of red gave her enough pop, and the white lightened and brought light to the face. And it totally broke up her look and took it to a new level. So I was really excited to see that. And she said, I got this for like 8 bucks at Forever 21. So it doesn't have to be expensive. And I want to encourage you, I stress that because I want to encourage you to experiment. I want you to find the look that's right for you. And really discover what's going to be in balance, what's going to bring out your best coloring, and what's going to help you feel more like yourself. So try out accessories and see how they coordinate with your core colors and with your wow colors and work to bring it all together. Now, I want to talk for a minute about what I call add-ons and what that means. Accessories, sure, we talked about scarves. It also means jewelry, necklace, earrings, a watch, a bracelet, a scarf. But I take it a step further. It also includes shoes. I include a jacket. Why do I include jackets? Well, I will tell you that I talk a lot about what I call the power of the third layer. And again, to get back to the jeans and the t-shirt, when you show up in, say, a white t-shirt and a pair of jeans, that is super simple. And not that there's anything wrong with that. I'm not criticizing that by any means. But that is one of the most basic looks that you could wear. But when you put on a jacket, you add the third layer. And it's, that's the element that transcends your, or transforms your look and takes it to the next level. By adding a jacket, you bring in color, you bring in texture, you bring in sophistication, you bring in polish, you bring in your personality. So I want to encourage you when you add in a jacket, add in something that is all you. Bring in your personality. Don't just wear a black blazer. That's boring. If you're going to wear something with jeans and a t-shirt, bring in a leopard print trench coat, a zebra print crop jacket, a turquoise cardigan. Something that's going to bring in your style, something that's going to bring out your coloring, and something that's going to help you look gorgeous. Now shoes, one thing I want to say about shoes, when you're starting to build a wardrobe, I want you to focus your shoes on your core colors. Now, something I'll tell you about the other day, when I was shopping with my client, 
she needed some new shoes to go with her new suits. She bought a beautiful cocoa-colored suit, and we found some beautiful snakeskin pumps that looked perfect with it. Now, what I loved is that the snakeskin broke it up. It added some texture. It added some pattern. But it wasn't boring. Sometimes browns, brown and gray, when you talk about shoes in a flat leather, can just be too flat. And it's not an attractive look. But what I love about these is they broke up the look, yet they continued the color. And it just, it added enough style to keep it from looking stodgy. Now, the other thing that she did is she needed shoes that went with navy. I will tell you, though, navy shoes can be drab, really drab. Navy is a good neutral but one thing I've found with this formula is it's not always the most versatile. Mixing bright colors with navy can be tricky. Sometimes it can be done well. Sometimes it's not the best thing. So I want to encourage you to be careful when it comes to navy. But something that I found the other day in talking about color, people are always asking me, well, what shoes do you wear? What color shoes do you wear? Now, what we found the other day were some pewter, actually, I think they were pewter snakeskin pumps. They were very much like the brown snakeskin pumps, but the look was completely different. They were low-heeled. They were pointy toe. They were fabulous. They were comfortable. She could walk in them and still look polished, feminine, and sophisticated. Now, I thought it was great because we did pewter. Silver was one of her best metals. Her coloring was more cool. So the pewter reflected her, her look. It gave her her best metal, but it, it wasn't boring. If she had done simple navy pumps it would have been honestly almost matronly so i was excited that she found something that was different yet it coordinated enough to give it some excitement now the pewter was a deep pewter it wasn't a bright shiny pewter it was a deep pewter so it did not draw attention away one thing you want to think about is it when you wear bright colored shoes or colored shoes or textured shoes does it draw the eye downward? You may or may not want that. So think about that. If you want eye-catching shoes, great. I love eye-catching shoes, personally. A lot of times I, I'll wear neutral shoes, but every once in a while I'll wear my red boots or wear something else that's fun and playful, just how I'm feeling that day. So, But think about that, because if you wear something that's bright or that's got texture, it's going to pull the eye downward and can actually make you look visually bottom-heavy. But getting back to shoes, when you're starting to build a wardrobe, start with your core colors. Say you buy a brown suit or brown pants or gray pants. What color shoes do you wear? Start with shoes that coordinate. Shoes in a good neutral, shoes in a similar tone, and shoes that are not going to stand out. Once you have those, then you can step out and you can get shoes in your wow colors. In fact, I love it. And this isn't the right thing for everybody, but I love to see women wear turquoise shoes or jade shoes or teal shoes or red shoes. In fact, I will tell you, we're seeing a lot of colored shoes for spring 2013. Nectarine, mint. I, I don't know that I would personally wear shoes in those colors. And one reason is because they're too pale for me. If I wear shoes in a pastel, it's going to look visually unbalanced. Every once in a while, I'll wear a pair of light-colored shoes, but it is a rare occasion. Generally, I stick to medium or dark tone, so that's really about honoring your personal coloring. Don't let the trends dictate what you wear. If you see something that is a trend and you love it, find something that works for you. Maybe you go a couple of shades darker. Maybe you go to a different shade altogether. Maybe you say, hey, I don't want to wear mint or nectarine. I want to wear royal blue. And that's fine. That is totally fine. But this is where I want you to honor your intuition and your personal style and wear what feels like all you. Now, one thing I want to mention to you, just have to throw, throw this out there. I've been doing what I call my Discovery 101 sessions with clients. And, and when I do my Discovery 101 sessions, what I do is I take my clients through a process where we, where we talk about 
where we talk about their personal coloring, their face shape, their body type, and their personal scale. And I wanted to let you know, I'm actually doing more of these sessions. I did two this past week and had rave re- reviews. In fact, I had a couple of women tell me it was the best money they had ever spent. And I tell you that because I want to invite you to my next session. If you're in the Raleigh, Cary area, the Virginia area, I've actually had women come down from Virginia, South Carolina, different parts of North Carolina. My next Discovery 101 session is March 28th. It's going to be from 6 to 8 p.m. And if you would like more information and to see what is entailed with that, then I want you to send me a message on Facebook, or you can email me at michelle, M-I-C-H-E-L-E, at onechicmama.com. Or you can just click on the, actually just click on the Facebook icon above the video. Send me a message. Tell me, hey, I want more details about the Discovery 101, or actually just go to my events page. It's all there. You can sign up there. There's the link. It's going to give you all the details. But I tell you that because, in my humble opinion, it's four of the five elements that I think all women must know before getting dressed. And it's going to help you understand what your wow colors are. We're going to go through, you're going to walk away knowing what your top five wow colors are. Or, I'm sorry, your top five, your fabulous five colors. I got to get it straight. So it's going to help you understand what your best two core colors are, your best three wow colors are to create your fabulous five. And it's going to help you understand how to dress for your body type. All right. So the slide. Wrong one. Wrong one. Wrong date. Same information. Right. Wrong date. Forget the slide. Okay. Um, but if you want more information, just go to the Facebook page. Click on the Facebook icon on here. It will take you to the One Chic Mama page. Send me a message or click on the events page. But I would love, love, love to have you join me. And it's so fun to do it in a group setting. We had different people tell, helping each other, basically. It was just fun to see the ahas and see the insights. And you learn not only about yourself, but you learn by contrast. And you learn by comparison. And we had a little clothes swapping going on last week, too. In fact, I had people going home with stuff they never would have thought would work for them. And I had people giving up stuff that they loved. Well, I, I take that back. Not that they loved, that they thought they liked and they thought was right for them. But then they found out, hey, this is not working for me. So they were able to swap, and everybody won. They got rid of something that really didn't bring out their best, and they knew that it went to good use. So if I can help, I would love to help you. It goes both ways. Yes. It goes both ways. That's right. It goes both ways. But anyway, I want to let you know, I want to remind you, actually, I want you to tell yourself every single day that you are beautiful. And I want to remind you that you are beautiful. It is my philosophy that all women are beautiful. And when you can bring out your best, you can see it too. This is Mary Michelle for One Chic Mama TV, signing off. I'll see you next week. You are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. Our weekly lineup of call-in programs includes Computers 2K Now with Amnon Nissan, Sundays 9 a.m. till noon, Carrie's Psychic Cafe with Carrie Silkowski, Sundays 8 till 9 p.m., Health In with Debbie Brock, Mondays 11 a.m. till noon, Breaking Free with Marilyn Shannon, Mondays 8 till 9 p.m., One Chic Mama with Mary Michelle, Wednesdays, 4 till 5 p.m. Reawaken Your Brilliance with Julie Seibert, Wednesdays, 9 till 10 p.m. And if you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it at www.nissancommunications.com. Sponsored by thatvidblasterguy.com, carolinaapparel.com, and deltaforce.net.